Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. Very
before this, the king made a bad decision. His lack of trust in God, and God is going to uh, punish him for that. And so the prophet comes before the king and he speaks. He says, because you have relied on the king of Abraham, and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Abraham has escaped out of your hand. He says, when I the Ethiopians and the Lubin and an immense army with very many chariots and horsemen, yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. And so he's saying, why did you do what you did? I mean, you have history. God proved to you that he will protect you. He proved he's almighty. So why would you make this decision? You see what he did? And so now, it, it's, that's what happens. We have to be careful. Have to manage ourselves and manage those things that we can manage. And, and when things look overwhelming, we sometimes forget the history that we have with God. God has blessed us in the past, and some things cause us to forget those things. And so we begin to make decisions that are not okay with God. And so now he has to be punished. He said in verse 9, But I, the Lord, move to and fro throughout the earth, that he may be strong, strongly support those who, whose heart is completely his. You have acted wonderfully in this. Indeed, from now on, you will surely have wars. And so he knows what verse 9 says again. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth. And sometimes we think that God is not available, but he all, God is always available. Always available. But notice something. The times we think God is not available, when things are not going to play. See, when things are not going to play, the way we think they should go, sometimes we feel like God is not available because we're looking at the things that are not going well. And so we're not mad. See, we have to manage those days. Those old days are really helpful to us. They're lost. For the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth, that he may be, that he, listen, that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. See? He's supporting those whose heart is completely his. And so this king, his heart was not given over to God because he made decisions that were contrary to the will of God. He showed his lack of faith. So his heart was not totally with God. He said, you have acted foolishly. God said, you have acted foolishly. Indeed, from now on, you will surely have more than another state. I want to show you something. He cannot manage it. He cannot manage it. God is going to punish him. There's, there's consequences for his sin. And so he can't manage that. The, the prophet comes and he tells him this is what uh, is going to happen because this is what you've done. This, this is also what you've done. So he can't manage that. He can't manage that. There's nothing he can do about that. You know what? Then, then notice his attitude verse 10. Then Asa was angry with the seer and put him in prison for he was enraged at him for this. Notice that. The man of God goes before the king and he speaks the word of God. The king had a lack of respect for uh, this prophet. He throws him in prison. He's angry. He's angry. And Asa oppressed some of them. Not only that, but the Bible says that Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. So he throws the prophet into prison and he he punishes the people for what God said was going to happen to him. See, at this time, he can, at this point, he chose to manage himself in this way. The Bible says Asa was angry with the seer, that's the prophet, and put him, see, that was his, that was his choice. You see, he could not, he could not manage, God only made his decision, and so what he has to do is manage how he's going to handle the decision that was made. And because he was angry, this is how he managed himself. That's his choice. But watch. So he's angry, he goes to problem in prison, and then he punishes the people. That's how he manages himself. Now watch. And now it says, and now the acts of Asa, Bob says, now watch this. And now the acts of Asa from first to last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And then, no, 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 it says, and in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in the streets. Now he's diseased in the streets. I'm the time that God is still trying to get his attention. See, God is still trying to, he can't manage that disease in the streets. He has a disease in the streets. He cannot manage that. That's happening. Look, in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in the streets. 
his disease was severe. Now notice what, instead of him praying to God, yet even in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. But notice what happens in verse 38. So Asa slept with his fathers, having died in the 41st year of his reign. He did. So Asa only heard himself. Listen, this is important as we deal with life, that we manage those things, all the things that we can manage, and we manage ourselves correctly. Notice this. He made decisions. He decided that he was because of his anger, he was going to disregard God and, and do what he wanted to do. And, and so what if and, and, and then later on in life he gets disease and his feet was so severe, instead of him going to God, he decides to what? To go to, to, to those physicians. Not trusting in God anymore. And what happens? Eventually he dies. Who did he hurt? He only hurt himself. See, as we learn how to live life and learn how to conduct ourselves on a, on a daily basis, it's important that we learn to manage ourselves. And we, a way to manage things is only manage what we can handle. I said before, and I'll say it again, we can only manage what we can manage. When he was disease in his feet, that was, at that point, it was time to manage something that he could manage. He could manage his behavior. He could manage himself. Look at First Peter chapter three. I'm gonna read this First Peter chapter three. See, he could manage his behavior, but he didn't manage his behavior correctly, and now he's dead. So he only hurt himself. Notice this: to sum it up, let all listen. Let all be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, brotherly, kindly, and humble in spirit. Now, notice this. No sense. Not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. No sense. So here's the problem. Now Asa had a problem here. He sinned against God. He shouldn't have done that. God was long suffering with him. And, 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 and so now here comes the punishment, the results of the consequence of the sin. And instead of him, Doing it, no, instead of him respecting God like David. See, I love David. See, think about what David. David's punishment came, and David managed his thoughts. David managed himself. Even though it was a struggle, David stayed faithful to God versus this king. When God went forth his punishment, he goes the opposite direction. You see? So he says, I like to sum it up, let all be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kindly, humble and humble in spirit, humble in spirit, that's your mind. Watch. I can manage this. Not returning evil for evil, or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead of like that, but giving a blessing instead of managing myself. So I can see, he said not returning insult for insult, that means someone is insulting me. If he says not returning insult to insult, that means again someone is insulting me. And he's saying when someone insults me, I can't manage the insult. I can't manage how you insult me, but what I can do, I can manage how I handle the insult. See, he said, I like the way he says that. Not returning uh, uh, evil to evil, that means someone is doing me some harm and someone is doing evil to me. I can't manage that. I cannot manage that evil. I can't. I can't. You can do so well. Sometimes we bring evil amongst ourselves. Sometimes it's just a, we can do so well and here comes evil because whatever whatever situation is, we get it just sometimes it's not up. It just happens. I can't control that. I cannot control that. But I can control how I react to the evil. He says, the Bible says, not returning. Evil for evil, therefore somebody is doing evil to somebody else. I can't what I what I can do, I can manage how to handle that. See? Or insult or insult. But how how do I handle that? He tells you how do I handle that? Instead of insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. So now I'm happy, see, I'm training myself, I'm working on myself, and so now this may sound strange. But thank you for the insult, because now I'm learning. See, if I never had any insult, then how I learn how to handle the insult? We have to understand that. If I never, if people never did me, 
didn't mean no harm, that how do I learn how to handle harm? The Bible says here that all, that listen, not returning evil for evil, or insult for insult, but giving and blessing instead. And so therefore, here's my text. When someone insults me, it's a text. You have to catch yourself. You have to catch yourself. You know, because sometimes they call me not when you're really not expecting it. When someone insults me, right? And, and so now, here it is, here it is. It's a test. The first thing I want to do is, is insult them back to defend myself. But here's a test. It's a test of my faith in God. Instead of insulting me, I'm going to give you a blessing. You hear people say that? You hear many people say that? You know what, man? Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, you know what? That hurts, but I'm going to pray for you. That's like, that's... See, you weren't, you've done that before. You know, that doesn't feel good when you said it, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you. And sometimes it's just being quiet. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm sorry to feel that way. You know, and I don't want to go here, but you know what really gets the people who really want to get them? I should talk like this. You know what really gets the people sometimes when they really just, just, just insult you or really speak aloud and you're like, oh, okay. All right, then. I mean, it's something about the way you conduct yourselves and the way you handle yourself that really, it's like all of a sudden, they may continue, have you noticed that? I've done it before. They may continue, they may continue, but they're all, they're, it's like they're flying into the way. And you're so calm and so cool, they continue. They're insulting, and all of a sudden, it's like, you see, that? there's nothing else to do. You see, and so this is, this is what God expects us to do. Now, watch this. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. This is not an easy task, and God knows that, but we need these things to teach us to be like God. He said, let this mind be new, which is also in Christ Jesus. And so these things, when they come into existence, I cannot control that. Uh, it's, but I need them to help me to have the mind of Christ. And so I take those things, I train myself. He notices in verse 10 of chapter 6, Ephesians 1. It's a train. He says, verse 10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full arm of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. So I'm putting on the full arm of God. You see? Well, and now, he does, now notice this. The schemes are coming. Have you noticed that? The schemes are coming. They're coming. They're coming. But he's telling you how to prepare for the schemes. Now, notice where he takes it. He says, put on the full arm of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. I can't control that. He's telling me, Curtis, they're coming. And so what you need to do is put on a full arm of God. Prepare your mind for the day that is coming. It's preparation. And so me rendering evil for evil, giving insult for insult, I'm not prepared myself for the time that I need to be prepared. That's what people have to understand. When I'm not doing what God requires me to do, I'm not preparing myself for the next level. I said it before, there are some people that we know that are still the same, they have the same problem, same issue, year after year, day after day, month after month, they just they don't stop. And and, and they don't say all oh, people like that, they react to things the same way. They react to things the same way. They insult, insult. Uh, evil for evil. And, and it's, it, it's blah, blah, blah. And so what happens? They never change the way. They're not. And what happens? The devil just continues to utilize you, you, you to tear a person down. It, that's, because you, they're not training themselves. And I want you to understand this. I want you to grasp this. And remember what I said before, the Bible teaches us that this is preparation for the heavenly realm. The body that we want to receive, we're going to receive that. Everybody on earth will receive this spiritual body that's fit for the heavenly realm. The soul has to be prepared. And these things are preparing us to be with the Father. He said, be holy, for I am holy. Be holy in all your behavior. That's a preparation. That just doesn't, just doesn't happen overnight. And I'm telling you, these things like managing what we can manage and, and, and showing God how we love Him by managing our faith when things don't go right. That's preparing us for the hell and ground. And, and insult to insult is no preparation. And so he's telling us how to prepare. Finally, be strong in the Lord and be in the strength of His might. 
He's saying, do that, but this is something that you have to do. We have to do it. Put on the full arm of God. It's not going to happen. You just can't wake up in the morning and sound strong in the morning. That's just not going to happen. He said, this is what you need to do. Put on the whole arm of God, not half of it. Not three quarters of it. Not, 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 no, not a quarter. He said, put on the whole arm of God. If life is getting you right now, and, and your faith is not where it should be, and because of some, some turmoil, some difficulty that you're experiencing, and, and, and you're, maybe you just you have to go back and learn what it means to put on the full arm of God. And whatever you're dealing with, sometimes I'm telling you, listen, we need those things to call. Listen, if I didn't have tribulation, then how do I learn how to put the full arm of God on? See, he's talking to people. He's talking to the Ephesians here, the saints, the church. Who, are, who have some issues, some difficulty, and he's telling them how to handle this difficulty. There's something that you have to do in order to be strong. It's just not gonna, it just doesn't matter. And the people who are not doing anything are not going to be strong. And you know, it's like they're not ready for the next level. You're not ready for the next level. A lot of us right here, I'm telling you, a lot of you sitting here, I know you've been around for more than many uh, years, probably longer than I have, and so what happens is, the reason why you don't handle things a certain way is because you've been doing things. In other words, you've been in the, you've been involved in the war, the trenches. And so now, when things happen, you handle those things differently. But if you ask me, and I ask you, if you think back, you didn't handle those things the way you, the way you handle those things now, you didn't handle them back then the right way. You see? Or, but now, when you, because your experience is, and you've learned, and you, you learn how to do those things, you can handle, you handle those things in a Christian manner. And back then, sometimes you, we think we handle it correctly, but as we, get, as we develop wisdom, we realize, you know what? We do that right. But back then, we always did it right. You see, that, that's, and see, that's what he's saying. So now you're putting on the full arm of God. Watch verse, verse 12. For the struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world, forces of the darkness, darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take, listen, therefore, take up the full arm of God that you may be able to resist the day, listen, resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. So here comes the evil day. Here, and the, the evil day is, you know how you can have a wonderful day and all of a sudden you find out, oh, this, this person did this, or oh, this Purpose of that, or this happened, or you go to work and this happened, that happened, and it's like, well, this is, you can't control those. In a, a long time, if I'm living, I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning. And when I wake up tomorrow morning, I can manage myself. I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning, there's a routine that I do every morning, and then I head on, I head on out, and, and, and as I, I can manage myself, but there are things I cannot manage. And, and so I, I, I have to prepare myself for the day because it may be a rough day. And if, I'm, if I prepare myself for the day, then I can handle that day. You see, and, and that's, what, that's what he's saying. It, it, for the struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the powers, against the world, the world, the world forces of this darkness, of spirit, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly place. Therefore, take, therefore, as a result, I said in verse 12, therefore take up the full arm of God, that you may be able to resist the day, evil day, and having done evil to stand, having done, and having done, having, let's go back. Having, listen, therefore take up the full arm of God, that you may be able to resist it in the evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Can we say we've done everything that day to stand firm? See what I'm saying? So I've done what I need to do to stand firm. And so therefore, one thing I can do to stand firm is to understand that I cannot manage everything. I can only manage what I can manage. I can, what, what's this? I, I like, look, look at, look at, um, let's go to 2 Thessalonians, let's go to Hannah. I like Hannah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. So I wake up in the morning. I, 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 I prepare myself, I say my prayers, I read my scriptures, I get my mind ready for the day if I want to. 
sometimes may no want to. And so, uh, and I'm preparing to prepare myself for the day, for the things that I cannot manage. See, I'm preparing myself for the things that I cannot manage. I can manage that. You heard what I just said? I wake up in the morning, I can manage that. I can manage saying my prayers, I can manage reading the Bible, I can get up early in the morning to get my mind together. You know, if I get up at six, I get up at five, have my devotion, I get myself together before I end the day. If I know the day is going to be tough, I get up early and prepare my mind to live the day. And, and, and see, but then I then as I prepare myself, I can remember, you know, I've been through this before. And I can handle it this way. I, you know what? Oh, I can because I, you see, and so I'm prepared as I hit the day, and when that day hits me, it's wrong, it's really difficult, I'm managing myself. I'm managing myself. They say, you know what? Someone said this, or someone said that. I can't manage that. You know, when someone comes to me, remember that when I told you I went to work one morning, and, and I walked up to the, to the teacher, I'm not going to say who it was, because they may see the video tape. But I, I walked up to the teacher, and I go, I said, uh, I said, uh, do you have a schedule? Well, I have my schedule. And I snapped back and threw me, and I was like, what do you mean? I said, I'll tell you what, you know, I, well, I, I, I just, I, my, my disposition, you can tell, I just kind of like, whatever, you know. And I walked off, and then later on I thought about it, I said, no, that's not, that's not. That, see, she threw me off. She threw me off, because it was already, that's the one that all the kids are coming back, and it was tough, and your kids are, you know, and it was just tough that everybody was saying, why? And I noticed when I walked in that those teachers, some of them were just haywire. I just said, I'm going to the gym, I'm going to stay, I'm not coming out. And so it was, it was that time of day. And this one I knew was a tough day. One, there's one teacher who's always, it's like, when you see a teacher who's always positive, and she's going, she moves it, you know, something's wrong. And that's, I'm telling you, that's, I know this, I can go high. But I thought about it, and when I went back to find a teacher to apologize, I told you, I think I told you last time, when I saw a text, she sent me a text apologizing for her attitude. And we talked about it, and I said, you know what, I'm sorry. And we are gonna, and we decided, we, we gonna, we're just going to make this thing happen. We're going to make this thing happen. We can do this together. And we're fine. You see, well, my point was, I didn't feel better when I was going to it. It threw me off. I'm intense, they're intense. I asked you a question, I don't know you're going to snap at me. And all of a sudden, I began to snap at you. It was like, wait a minute. But here's, here's a test of Christianity. That's not right. That is not right. I'm sorry. Think I'm sorry. You know what that you know test is? He said, I'm sorry. Relationship is just fine. Think. We don't let, the, we don't let that evil, that, we don't let the sun go down on our back. Look at him. Look at the time. Look at him. Do we know the story about Hannah? Hannah was hurting because she was not able to have children. She was being ridiculed by the other wife. And it hurt her. Look at verse uh, 2. And he had two wives, the name of one was Hannah and the name of the other one was Penina. Penina had, listen, look at Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this, now this man would come up from his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice the Lord and false tribal. And the two of the son of Eli, Eli the two sons of Eli, Hopi and Penna, as you know about them, were priests to the Lord. And when the day came that Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penna. His wife and all her sons and all her daughters. All her sons and all her daughters. Oh, she had some children. But Hannah had none. Four and a she's hurt. And I was saying that was a that was a command back then. Verse 5. But Hannah, but to Hannah he would give a double portion. Hannah was a sweet person. The husband would give a double portion. But he loved Hannah, but the Lord had closed her womb. The Bible said the Lord closed her 
Maybe the distal tip of the leaf. Plus the sequence. Arrival, however, would provoke our ability to irritate her because the more closer. See? See? Can you imagine that? She's already hurting because she can't have children. Then you have someone to disturb you every day. You know, every day, often, nonstop. That adds fuel to the fire, exacerbates the pain. And so, she's hurting. And it happened, look at verse 7, and it happened year after year, as all as she went up to the house of the Lord, she would provoke her, so she went and would not eat. And they go up to the house of the Lord, and here she is with her children, and they had none. And I'm inclined to believe, and I should be a most likely a beautiful person. And there seemed like there was some jealousy involved. Think about it. The husband would get more portion to Hannah. She's a beautiful person. He really loved her. The other wife. See, like she was jealous. That's what happened. So she wanted Hannah to feel bad. Hannah cannot control that. Hannah cannot control that. See, Hannah cannot. Let me show you what Hannah did. Then we're saying, El Can El her husband said to her, Hannah, why do you weep and why do you not eat and why? See, see that? And why is your heart sad? See what she's going through? See? She's human. Am I not better to you than ten sons? And Hannah rose after eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat of the doorpost, etc. But notice what happened. Anna, verse, Hannah, verse 10, and she greatly is she, and she greatly distressed. Praise the Lord and wept bitterly. See what she did? She prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she made a vow. And she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy maidservant and remember me and not forget thy maidservant, but will give thy maidservant a son. And I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And the razor shall never come on his head. He, that's the Nazarite vow. So I know we know that Samuel had long hair. See what she did? You catch it? See what she did? She was greatly distressed. You don't see her. You don't see insult for insult. You don't see that. You don't see that here. Notice that. You don't. You don't, you don't the Bible's telling the story. You know, notice how, how humility. She's a humble person. The husband really loved her and gave her more. And here, here she is. They're going up to sacrifice the Lord every year. And Hannah has her children. And she's boasting about her. Hannah has no. She's her. How does she manage that? She couldn't manage that. She still. But notice how much you understand something. She still went. And worship God every year. He still went up there. She managed that. So she, even though she, it said year after year, but it went. This is what she had to face. But she still went to worship. You don't think God saw that? You don't think God saw that? You don't think God favored her? Understand what she did. Hannah Anna is going up there. And she has all her children, and she's she's doing well, and she's proud. She's got all her children going to sacrifice to the Lord. And that's a wonderful travel. Hannah's got to travel, and she doesn't, she's looking at everyone with their children. I'm going to say this quickly now, I'm going to say, but I remember, I got to tie this in there. I remember when we lost our first child, and this hurt me, but we had one more. Well, then, you know, I think the child had been passed, gone for like two months. And we were at Walmart, and uh, this, this uh, mother had a baby in her carriage looking at clothes, and you know, was looking. She was looking. She was like, she was like, thinking, my child was gone. I came. I didn't say words. I couldn't say it. I didn't know what to say. She's not, you know, sometimes you don't know what to say. That's what I'm saying. I forgot my point. I don't know what to say. <laughs> but notice what Hannah, notice what Hannah does. Hannah compared herself to what was happening. And she and she goes and she prays to the Lord. See? 
she managed herself. She went and she prayed to the Lord. All that distress, she prayed to the Lord. She never stopped worshiping God. She met Jack. She didn't have insult for insult. She didn't do evil for evil. She kept her sanity. And those who saw it, those who saw it, God saw it. God saw it. And those who the Bible says, year after year, didn't have by the way, did you? Year after year, year after year, year after year, year after year. She got, I don't know how long it was, but notice God had seen everything. God was God never stepped in. He met Hammer Hammer. She had to grow. She continued to worship him. She was faithful to her husband. She was faithful to God. She was faithful to whatever she had to be faithful to. She was faithful to the priest. And what happened? And she went to God. She just she, she prayed, she prayed. And I'm inclined to believe that was not the first prayer. I'm inclined to believe that was not the first prayer. And I want you to get some. I, mean, I got to repeat this. I want you to understand this. Understand how distress, how emotional distress. I want you to the Bible. She was greatly distressed. Did you get that? She was greatly distressed. And what did she do? She went to God. She trusted in God. She couldn't manage what she what was going on with her. I said that she couldn't manage uh, the insults that was presented to her. She couldn't manage much. But she could manage her faith in God. And God blessed her tremendously. And her son Samuel became a great prophet. When she had that boy, after she did what she did, you know, I don't know what they call it, meaning, whatever they do, she went to the temple and turned right over to God. And I'm reading the story, but God bless her more too. All right? That's what all you manage what you manage. Only manage what you manage. And the results is our reward of the heaven. It's waiting for us. God sees everything. Don't let time fool you. Do not let time fool us. God sees everything. He's watching. He's watching all of us. Remember what I said. Only, that's only man who we can manage. We can manage ourselves. We can have the days coming.